growing up in a six member family all in a single room sounds tough right now picture this sleeping on the benches of a makeshift hotel since the small house you call home cannot accommodate you all at night all this at a tender pre-adolescent age does your past really have to be your future is the hope inside you still alive nobody chooses where he ought to be born but your destiny that lies in your hands if you visualize it prayer is and put in more effort then for sure it will actualize my name is Nico Mondi and this is the course Madhari is a settlement of roughly 400,000 people where the vast majority of the population lives under the poverty index in houses of mud and corrugated iron sheets. Madhari is the oldest slum in Nairobi and lacks basic services like sanitation, clean water, electricity and passable roads. From Madhari Valley, we meet a one Mr. Andre Zotieno donning a t-shirt with the inscriptions Madari 1989, a sense of pride he says, for it is here that a dream was born. I'm Andre Otieno. Uh, I'm a born Madari. I was born here, raised here. And uh, this is my hood, that is what I can say. Uh, I'm a, a young man who is very passionate about youth affairs matters governance, matters mental health. As a teacher by profession, I, I interact with so many young people and therefore the challenges that they go through, I try to relate with them. And uh, from that, I find, uh, I find a space where I want to invite them and uh, help them grow because where I come from, there's a way I understand their life, I understand them and uh, I want to use those platforms as a youth leader, as a, as a teacher, to reach them and empower them to make them better than I was when I was growing up. Over the weekends, Andre had no option but to find himself a side job to supplement his livelihood. This led to being a part-time cobbler, a garbage collector, and later on, an artisan at a tender age. Uh, the hustle back then was that over the weekend, uh, I would go to my uncle's uh, cobbler's shop, help him, and also get something, you know. You're a man, you, you'll always find your way of earning something from it. Then uh, <clears throat> here, there's, uh, if you're connected enough, you, you get linked with guys who collect garbage. And you know, this is a job you need to do much earlier like uh, 3 a.m. or 4 a.m. because where you're going to dump this, this garbage is, is, is not a legal, a legal space where you're supposed to dump them. So it, it, became, it became like our hustle. Like you wake up early, you go collect the garbage, then you're paid 20 bob per door, then that money is divided amongst you. So there are so many small things that you could lay your hands on, but as long as they're going to give you something little for you to survive, it's okay. As in many impoverished areas, children and teens from Madari are at incredible risk for unplanned pregnancies, involvement in drugs and alcohol, crime, prostitution and gangs. And while powerful factors such as drugs, alcohol, crime can keep children from completing their education, this is compounded by the reality that many families in Madari struggle to afford basic school fees. One of the biggest challenges here uh, is that there are so many organizations, there are so many guys who want to come here and change the mindset. But uh, Ilanda, there are youths who want to live in a world that is, is not real. Housing is a problem. You're raised in a single house, you have your mom, your dad, and you're trying to, you're trying to, to grow and maybe change their lives, but you cannot because even for them, they cannot provide you the, the right education that you, are, you, you, you dream of. So we don't even have the dreamers that can inspire you in the end. And therefore, it takes a very, a very noble person 
to look at the struggle and think of uh, I'm going to I'm going to use my struggle maybe to, to to change other people or I'm going to rise above this and be somebody different. With majority of the inhabitants living below a dollar a day, parent to child relations in the slums is wanting. A huge number of parents have a near zero relationship with their children. This to an extent that they have no clue who their children are or what they do past school. Thus, if they so attend. But you know, um, I can say that parents really are not in charge of the lives of the, the, the children around here. Uh, if today I bring my father here and I told uh, you ask him if he knew I, I, was, I was waking up at 4 a.m. and collecting garbage, he doesn't know. When things started changing for me, I was getting my little money to buy my own clothes and anything. He wasn't questioning it. And therefore, parents have gotten to a point where they are struggling and they don't care where the kid is or what he's going to get. They ride on something that he's a man, he's going to, he's going to make his way. So whichever way he's making his way is not part of his concern. That is, that is for the boy, let him be. They realize when it's too late, maybe he's been lynched or gunned down. That is when they come to the reality that I, I kind of uh, develop this behavior in this kid by not getting involved. News from his father that he had no option but to discontinue his education really shattered his life. He spent the whole night crying, but his cries fell on deaf ears. Then came the post-election violence, and his perspective on the slum changed, never to be the same again. The chills from the memories of what transpired then ignited the urge to a better life away from the Madari slums. From that post-election violence, things started looking a bit awkward for me, like the space was not really, really safe for me. In 2008, my father told me that I could not, I could not continue with my studies. And uh, it, was, it was a sad time for me. I cried a lot that night. And uh, it took me two years out of school. Uh, my father's dream was that I venture into business, uh, maybe hawk, stuff but uh, I, I wasn't for that like for me I wanted education my brain everything my dream was just inclined towards education and therefore uh, I was taken to be a welder I was going to be trained as a welder which I did for two years and uh, during that time completely uh, I had changed my mind I, I had no dream I was not hoping that one day I'll go to the university Nobody chooses where he ought to be born, but your destiny, that lies in your hands. My name is Nick Komondi, and this is The Course.